I know some of you guys out there are extreme cheap asses and you want to know what's the cheapest, what's the cheapest, what's the cheapest 5 inch I can buy. Well, this is it guys. The Ishin Wizard, one of the original bind and flies, one of the most accessible so you wouldn't have to figure out how to build back in a time when Betaflight was not easiest to navigate and crafting something that would actually successfully fly and not just turn into a smoking ball of fire was a lot harder than it looked. Fast forward a few years though, does there still exist a market for a quad like this? The Ishin Wizard version 3 is the third time the charm for Ishin's classic. The Wizard came at an affordable budget but it generally was known to have some reliability issues. Now at the time when this gained popularity this was a quad that existed in a time where most things had reliability issues. But now that we have the Diatone Romas and the iFlight Nazguls, is something like this still relevant? Well, let's go over the components that it has. What's the first thing you notice is that this has the old style individual ESCs, one for each motor. A lot of old timers carry those. <laughs> It also has a new, very premium looking Unibel design. This is Ishin's 2207.5, 2550 kV, meaning that it's meant to be flown on 4S. But if you look at it carefully, you can notice it's a little bit taller than I would normally expect. The construction is a little different. You can see how tall the top of the bell is to where the actual magnets start, which are like down here, three or four mils. That's a little strange. It looks average thickness but not as thick as some of your more premium motors there are some other unique bits of styling the arms are kind of thin for a freestyle frame so that means that it's probably going to fly through the air and have good aerodynamic qualities but these could potentially break now they are individual arms so if you can get spares that's not too big of a concern i also do wish the top and bottom plates were a little thicker they appear to be about two mils thick which is on the thinner side it does have a nice pre-installed buzzer and set of LEDs for you on the back right here. It has some nicely designed arm guards, but one of the things I don't love is that, yes, it's nicely designed. It has good skid protection if you were to go skidding across the ground, but it doesn't actually stick out past the motor. Uh, the arm or the guard itself, and that's what's going to give you that motor protection. So like, what's the point of this? Uh, it should be sticking out like this far and it would protect the motor a bit more. Uh, the same thing goes for the front. You can see how they've installed the camera. It's going to get obliterated in a head on collision. So there are some things that can be fixed. You, it does look like you could actually slide the camera back further in the mount. It does come with some additional accessories, a strap, couple sets of props, some zip ties and a battery pad. This has a little wiggle plate that is going to help Keep your arms very rigid and not move, which is a key for having individual arms. Again, I do wish at least this bottom plate was a bit thicker. This is going to be a weak point. I don't know if this battery pad was made for like a different design because it has like two large square holes, but there's not two large square holes anywhere on here. So is it just supposed to fit like this, like in the middle? I don't get it. I don't get it. What is this for? Yes. I don't get it. Okay, so we pop the top. You can see it has Ishin's sort of all-in-one flight controller that has pads for individual ESCs. And then on top of that, they have this sort of slimline MMCX video transmitter here going out to this sort of little stubby antenna. It looks sort of like a knockoff Axie or Foxy or Lollipop. It does have a little plug for you to install your own receiver. I don't love this because it only has three wires. I guess I can install an FR Sky receiver, but I really want to use Express LRS, meaning that I'm going to need four out wires. If they would just have put four wires, it would have been really convenient because I could have just, I could have very easily just soldered to this and stuck my receiver in this little pocket that they have for it to sit in which this is actually nice but now I'm gonna have to take this whole thing apart in order to get to this to do it there is full set of pads up here so I could use 5 volt ground t5 and r5 for this case I'm just gonna go with this because I'm not gonna fly at super long range So here's the little happy model receiver with the ceramic antenna installed and mounted right here behind the camera. Okay, so this flew out of the box 
way better than I expected. I really didn't expect too much for under $200. I still don't recommend bando bashing or crashing this thing too hard. Pretty sure the arm will snap, the top plate will snap, the bottom plate will snap, but the camera that it comes with, the Runcam Phoenix 2, actually has really good image quality. Better image quality than the regular cameras that I normally race with, which is the Predator V5 Nano. So you really get a lot of bang for your buck. There's a lot of power here, even on 4S. The 2207.5 2550 KV has a lot of juicy power. We're even going to let you see me fly this thing around the track at the night spot tonight. We built a lot of freestyle elements so that this thing would be right at home. And let's see if you can fly a cheap old school style freestyle quad on a track i don't know how long you can expect for something that this price to last it does have gepar c's f4 flight controller on there which is a pretty good one i've used for not bad Ishin right. does seem to have improved some i don't know how long these individual escs are going to last but because they are individual if they do burn up you can replace them fairly inexpensively i'll have links to the full quad below as well as the escs and spare parts normally i wouldn't review a very cheap bond to fly like this but with chip shorted pricing in effect right now prices are going through the roof which means that you can't get a really good bind and fly anymore for less than $300. The Diatone Roma and the iFlight Nazgul being the leaders of the pack both going for over $300. This Ishin Wizard V3 upgrades a lot of the parts for under $200. I have a feeling that most of the people might have less headaches, less troubles, more crash resistance, and just an overall better experience spending that over $300 out there. But knowing how I was when I got into the hobby, I just wanted to buy the cheapest possible thing out there. And at the time, the cheapest possible thing that you could possibly buy was the Ishin Wizard and now it is again. You can use this to learn how to fly, but don't intend that this is going to be the ultimate freestyle bando basher because I don't think it'll hold up to a lot of hard crashes. Now, when I first started, I was very, very careful because I didn't want to break my new drone investment. So I didn't even break a single prop for almost my first six or eight months of flying. And if you think you're gonna be like that, then this could be an option. Links in the description below. If you buy from there, it'll help the channel and I would really appreciate it. If this helped you make your decision, whether it's to get one of these or get a premium option, all three links will be in the bottom below. Let me know which one you went with and if this was helpful to you. Thanks guys. Here we go, the wizard on the track. Oh shit. Ooh, somebody hit the bell. Could have used a little more camera angle here. Nazgul. I think most people will be better than that, but there are people that that hundred dollars is the difference between them flying nothing and flying something and flying anything is better than flying nothing. I know some of you guys out there are extreme cheap asses and you want to know what's the cheapest, what's the cheapest, what's the cheapest five inch I can buy. 